Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're doing Q&A number three. Um, it's pretty soon after the second one, but there's a ton of questions and we would love to answer your questions. So let's get started. As always, if you want to support us, go follow us on Instagram and Twitter and consider supporting us on Patreon. So I totally forgot when I was originally filming this video to include this, so we've inserted it right after the intro. <laughs> uh, people have been suggesting a bunch, use more b-roll in videos where my face is on camera because of course it makes sense. It's boring to just stare at my face for 10 minutes at a time. So I have good news and bad news. The bad news is it will take time. The good news is 100%. That's our intention. If you've noticed, over time, we've slowly been introducing more and more B-roll into those type of videos. And the main kind of barrier is just that we're building up our footage. So over time, when we go out, we film extra videos when we're filming, and then we put those into a library of kind of B-roll clips that we can play over videos of us talking. But since we've used a lot of those clips already, you know, we have to build up the library. And so as time passes, you'll see it'll become more and more B-roll and less and less of my face. So, thanks and enjoy the video. So, let's get into the questions. Now, we're not gonna name people uh, on the questions. Some people were saying anonymous or things like that in the forum, don't worry, we don't, we don't do anything. We're just curious what people from the community are asking questions and you can always leave the name section blank if you're curious. There will be a link to the fourth Q&A Google form in the description below. So, without further ado, let's start. So the first question is, what do I think about distance-based fares on the TTC? So basically, going from one place to another costs different amounts based on the distance, or so that could be in a zone system, or it could be a direct, basically a table of how much does it cost to go from this station to this station. I think it's a great idea, to be honest. I think many of the best systems in the world use a model like that. Uh, many systems in Asia, for example. Uh, zones is something I'm not a huge fan of because they're can be a lot of issues regarding how much does it cost when you're crossing zone boundaries. Some people get kind of screwed because they have to pay a ton because they're constantly crossing a boundary. So even though it's a little more confusing sometimes, with a smart card system I think the direct distance from station to station is the best metric. Of course, as people have mentioned in the past, sometimes kind of less privileged people or uh, basically disadvantaged people uh, live at the kind of distant areas of a city and so they're naturally going to have to go much further and they're going to have to pay a higher cost and that's why I think it's important that we have a very good system of kind of fares for people who are lower income and the like. So the next question is basically saying do I think the stations on the Vaughn extension are too large? Uh, quick answer to that, yes. Some of them, like Downsview Park for example, I think is kind of a reasonable station. It's not too flashy, it makes a good connection with Go. But then again, there's a lot of waste in some of the stations I see. For example, the same station, Downsview Park, they spent so much money on this gigantic station building and all this gigantic space, but then they don't even have canopies over the GO tracks. So I think that there's a lot of kind of misuse of funds. I think that a station like Highway 407 could still have a huge bus terminal and not be this gigantic massive structure. Yes, it looks cool, but it's going to be at a highway interchange forever. There will probably never be a high rise or anything next to it. Something like what you have in the South Shore of Montreal where you just have kind of an airport terminal with different arms would make a lot more sense and it would probably cost less money. So this kind of design would probably make more sense and yes I think they're hugely larger than they need to be. Stations can be high capacity and still not be over the top art pieces. Yes if they were in maybe the core of the city where you know the land value is super expensive then it might make sense because you're building this station once ever but in this case, I don't think it's really worth the cost. Next question is, do I believe it's beneficial for governments to basically save money by building uh, lower capacity lines? So for example, the Eglinton Crosstown, the Ontario line, the Canada line, all these lines are kind of on the low end of the capacity spectrum. I'd argue the Ontario line is actually not, and I would argue the Crosstown is not as bad as the Canada line, but all of them are not super high capacity lines around, you know, uh, Crosstown up to 15,000 people per direction per hour. My argument would be yes, it makes sense. If 
The difference between building the line and not building the line is the size of the trains, which it actually often is. If you think of like building a line like the Anglican Crosstown as a full-size TTC subway, look at the Vaughan extension. It costs three and a half billion dollars for a couple kilometers. You'd basically be doing triple the length, so you'd be at around 10 billion for Eglinton, plus it's in a denser area. So the cost would just be way larger. It'd probably be 12 billion to make the Eglinton Crosstown a fully grade separated subway, if not more. And when you're thinking of those costs, this, the line would not be executed to the scope that we have right now in any reasonable amount of time. And so I think building it to a size that it's going to be at capacity, but probably only in 20 to 30 years, makes a lot of sense. You look at a lot of great cities like Paris, uh, New York, London, they have very dense networks. Especially cities like Paris and Madrid, which have really large, dense networks, have tons of lines, and the trains are not massive. You know, in Paris, um, there's a lot of lines with only five or four car trains, and that's because they have so many lines. So I think it makes a lot more sense to build more lines with shorter trains because then you actually have a lot more convenience. Your stop is going to be closer to where you're going. Look at the current TTC system and the trains are actually pretty large by international standards but the system doesn't go that many places. How much would you give to have the trains be say four cars long across the system like they are on the Shepherd line but then go to way more places and probably still carry the same number of people if not more because they go to more places. So I think that yes it, it makes sense to build lines now and worry about being over capacity later. Of course, let's try to be smart about it, but that's my overall thinking. So next is thoughts on the Kitchener Line freight bypass cancellation. Well, the Kitchener Line freight bypass was never really officially happening. It was always kind of like a tentative plan. It could still happen. There's nothing, it hasn't really, it's not official priority right now, but there's nothing that prevents it from happening in the future. I think that it's a gigantic project and it would make a lot of sense if it could relieve the Milton line. But if that's not gonna be kind of the outcome of building it, then I think it's debatable whether it's worthwhile. I think that project would make sense long-term, but as has been said by Phil Verster, who is someone I appreciate because he's a realist and he doesn't he's not dramatic and stuff, you can offer great service to Kitchener without the gigantically expensive freight bypass route. You know, even hourly or half hourly service to Kitchener would be pretty fantastic. I think people would not be complaining about that, at least if they had that right now. So why don't we establish that, and when the demand is there, then build the freight bypass. Nothing prevents you. Uh, spending that much money right now, when there's not necessarily kind of like the demand for sure, might not be the smartest decision. And right now we can still achieve all day two-way service without it. Next up, do you believe any of the proposed Subway extensions will start construction within the current government's term. Uh, I think it's definitely possible. I think the Ontario line can start by the end of the term. I think Eglinton West also can start by the end of the term. And I certainly hope the Scarborough subway extension can start by the end of the term. I think that obviously nothing will be completed by the end of the term. But I think that it's realistic to assume that the Ontario line and Scarborough especially can get started by the end of the term. Um, as long as the government is really aggressive about it. And I hate this, I, it's bad, because when a government is doing something that you're generally opposed to, which for me is not transit, you hate when they just push things through and ram them through. But I, I would say in general you can argue transit is such a big benefit to society that even a suboptimal transit plan might be worthwhile uh, uh, in pushing through. Next question is, why is Viserion Station the best station? It's not the best station. Uh, it's a good meme. Um, next question is, what do you think that the Go Lakeshore corridor needs to improve? Um, there, the question is kind of like, I focus a lot on the other routes, what does Lakeshore line need to improve? The Lakeshore line already operates quite frequently, it has a lot of express trains, some local trains. I would say a bit more scheduling consistency. Right now it's kind of random, like, unless you're taking it every day, it's very hard to judge when there'll be an express versus a local. Making that more consistent would be great. Of course, since the track layouts and stuff are kind of funny, it's hard to be consistent, but I think that would be one thing that would be nice to see. I would say also more station upgrades. Uh, for example, you look at a station like Burlington, fantastic. They're putting in some high density residential nearby, similar to Pickering, other stations. Let's see that happen along the Lakeshore line. Let's boost it up and get 
kind of a ton of people riding on that line so that there's lots of demand for RER type services in you know the next couple of years. I would also say that start talking about enhancing the services so have things like actual next train departure indicators on the platform, consider things like the indicators that show the loads on each car, uh, have better screens inside the train to tell you where which car you should stand in so you can be near your exit. Lots of little amenities. They have the base service down, but now it's the, let's try to get the niceties in there. Um, next question is, can I do bus route focuses? Um, based on the amount of time it takes to make videos, I would love to do something like that, but it's not practical when there are just so many other lines that I want to do videos on. There's whole cities I want to do videos on. Perhaps someday when we have more time, maybe more people, we can consider doing videos like bus route focuses, but unless it's like a BRT or something really special, we probably wouldn't because it's just not attractive enough for people to watch, especially because bus routes are so local to people. Uh, not that many people ride each bus route, and so it's just kind of less interesting to the general population. Next, do you think that it would be a good idea to merge Brampton Transit and My Way to create a regional level agency? Yes, I do. But I also think it would make sense to merge all of the transit agencies. I think kind of an I've been thinking a lot about it, and I think an intermediate step might be let's merge everything in the 905, and then we'd have the 905 agency, the TTC, and GO. And that would mean that the 905 agency is a bit more close in size to GO, I mean to the TTC, which would make the kind of operational differences and stuff a, a bit more reasonable. But I think that would be the best approach. First, synchronize up all the 905 services, because a lot of them do interconnect and then kind of bring those the standard of that up and then eventually merge in the TTC as well. So the next question is, how big of a mistake do you think it was to cancel the Main Street Brampton Go station portion of the Huron Ontario LRT? Well, I think it was clearly a huge mistake. Um, there was, uh, the Huron Ontario line is really important for connecting up Peel and the way it's set to be built now it's gonna get 70% of the way to being like a really great connection because it will connect to the Gateway Terminal in Brampton which ha has a lot of bus services, but getting up to Brampton Go would have just meant a next level interconnection. You would have been connecting all the three Western Go lines together with one light rail corridor and it would have made some things really interestingly more convenient. For example, perhaps you want to go from Waterloo to Hamilton. There's not a, currently a direct Go bus route, but it could be quite rapid if you had for example, you take a Kitchener train to Brampton, Huron, Ontario down, Lakeshore across. Things like that would have been very nice. And I think that Brampton is probably going to be in the situation Mississauga is in now, where it's going to be maybe 20 years from now that they finally get an opportunity to build rapid transit and it will be kind of too little too late as it is with Mississauga. The next question, why do you think the Huron, Ontario LRT is so expensive compared to the Ion LRT? Uh, so basically the reason that it's more expensive, it has interchanges with GO, it has some elevated sections, uh, Huron Ontario is more complex corridor where roads don't already need to be ripped up necessarily, so that has to happen. There's more disruption because of Huron Ontario and Huron Ontario is a busier route. It's not a conversion of existing railways. There's a ton of different reasons and those are kind of just the primary ones. Also Huron Ontario is going to carry quite a few more people. Uh, Ion is actually only has, I think, 14 trains. Here, Ontario will have, I think, quite a few more than that. So it's a different scope. And I think the price difference kind of reflects that. Uh, do a video of the best looking TTC stations. We might very well do that. I think that could be a very good video idea. I would stay tuned. We'll probably do something like that in the future. So next thing is, this is actually a question I got asked a couple times. So I'm gonna just answer it once. Why is the name of your channel named after one of the members of my team, which is me, and not the other? Why don't you name the channel according to its theme, purpose, and main content? So me and Ellen, my partner, work together to make the videos. Ellen is happy to help me with the videos and she just doesn't want to be like necessarily on camera and stuff. The way it's organized, we've discussed it lots, so that's with regard to teamwork and stuff. That's kind of something that internally we've decided that's the way we're going to go. With regard to why it's named after me, I think it's, I can make a very strong argument. When you have a YouTube channel, usually you don't find the channel by searching up, you know, transit YouTube channel. You find channels through videos. You might be interested in watching a video of the Montreal Metro and then you find my YouTube channel. And I think 
That's how you find 99% of channels. So first, I don't think it's impeding me from growing because people can't find my channel. Second, I way prefer having a name that's just my name. First of all, it's helpful for my personal brand, I, I, you know, because my name is out there, especially with relation to transit, which I, of course, enjoy because I'm passionate about transit. The other thing is that, say, for example, I name my YouTube channel Ontario Transit Channel or something like that. That's totally cool. And if you're, you know, if I was interested in just making videos about Ontario, that might make sense. But since I very much, you know, am flexible about what I make videos about, I think I kind of understand what the community likes to see, and I have kind of a variety of interests. I want to be able to go make videos in Vancouver and not have to be like, why are you posting Vancouver videos on the Ontario Transit channel? Also, in the future, I would love to be able to branch out to other things like, you know, infrastructure, skyscrapers, construction. If I get interested in something, I want to have the flexibility. And really, I'm the central piece of the content. There's lots of transit videos out there, but I'm the one making these transit videos. So having my name attached to it just kind of makes sense. Um, so that's, that's the reason. Uh, I like it, it doesn't impede me, and I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, feel free to disagree. Um, there's another question here asking, how will you get answers to the questions? We make videos. Uh, will you ever make content on the New York City area? As I said previously, sure, I would love to. Uh, I haven't been to New York in a, actually a couple of years now, but that's because prior to starting this channel, I, I had traveled around quite a bit. Uh, if it's the case now and I go travel, I do try to go film the transit system. Since I've been in university the past few years, I've been super busy and haven't been traveling a lot. But I can imagine uh, after I'm done university, which will be at the end of next year, I'll be able to travel more often and perhaps this year I'll travel more as well. And then I'll be filming uh, other systems. So yeah, for sure, if I go to New York, I'll do videos on it. Might do station focus it. I mean, uh, transit future videos on other cities as well. But in-person content, yeah, and if I go to other cities, which I do intend to do, I'll definitely do videos on the transit there. Uh, someone's requesting a future of transit in Niagara. That's something you will definitely see. So, this is another fun question. I know you like transit, but do you have a driver's license? After all, as good as Toronto Transit is, driving is convenient in Toronto. I do have a driver's license, mainly because I grew up in a place where transit just pretty much was not an option at all. I have not driven a car in years at this point, but I do have a you know full driver's license. Um, I love your station focus videos. Can I suggest one on Bramley? Yes, we will be doing a Bramley station focus. However, there's construction going on right now. A lot of stations that seem like, why haven't you done station focuses? Like Union, for example, Bramley, Kipling, all of them are under construction. We're kind of avoiding doing station focus videos of stations that are under construction because it's hard to appreciate the full station when it's kind of ripped up or it's a mess. So we do station construction videos sometimes, maybe we'll do one on Bramley, and then we'll do a full station focus when the current upgrades are complete, because there's a lot planned for Bramley actually. And then finally, what are your thoughts on Via Rail's expansion plans? Uh, do I think a Via Rail station at Eglinton makes sense? So I think Eglinton is a bit too close to downtown Toronto, given how popular Via is. If Via was way more popular, then it, I might be able to make the case that that would make more sense, but given that VIA isn't super popular, I think preserving the speed of the system is more important, so I don't think an Eglinton VIA station makes sense. HFR, or High Frequency Rail, slash the new trains on VIA, both great projects. I'd like to see both happen as quickly as possible. HFR is kind of being studied right now. The new trains have been ordered. Super excited about those new trains. They're gonna bring us up to the same standard as like, countries that care at a most basic level about rail transport, but will be similar to like some areas of the UK, some areas of Europe and Australia in terms of kind of pretty nice trains. So that's it for the Q&A today, guys. We answered a ton of questions. Of course, go ask more in the description. If you have kind of more questions too that are just short, you can leave them in the comments. As always, thanks for watching and have a good night. Thank you.